Whether it was the most watched moment of the Tokyo Olympic Games or an awestruck Olympic rookie in the pool, Canadian women were at the heart of it all in 2021. So from the women's soccer team changing the color of a medal to a surprising march to a tennis Grand Slam final, here are the performances that made us go wow this year. The Canadian women's soccer team's journey from back-to-back -back bronze medalists to Olympic champions captivated the nation. 4.4 million Canadians tuned in to watch Captain Christine Sinclair and company play Sweden for gold. Their championship run, nothing short of a team effort. Under the guidance of new coach Bev Priestman, the team leaned on its veterans but also embraced its youth movement. In the quarterfinals, goalkeeper Steph Labbe was instrumental in a penalty shootout win over Brazil. Next was a semifinal win over longtime nemesis the United States, thanks to a cool penalty from midfielder Jesse Fleming. The nail-biting gold medal game against Sweden went to penalties, where it was 21-year-old Julia Grosso nailing home the winning kick to a frenzied, tearful celebration. Change the color of the medal, mission accomplished. The look of awe said it all. In her Olympic debut, Maggie McNeil owned the field in the 100-meter butterfly, winning Canada's first gold medal in Tokyo and setting a new national record along the way. But it wasn't just her swimming that endeared herself to Canadians in the world. It was that priceless reaction when she won. Truly meme-worthy. Turns out she's nearsighted and doesn't wear contacts or prescription goggles when swimming. McNeil finished the games with three medals, one of each color, and was later named the best female athlete of the Tokyo Games by the Association of National Olympic Committees. Though she didn't win the ultimate prize in the US Open, Leila Fernandez transfixed Canadians with her performance at Flushing Meadows. On her remarkable run, Fernandez defeated three top five seeds, as well as four-time Grand Slam winner Naomi Osaka, before bowing out in the final to fellow teenager Emma Raducanu. The 19-year-old lefty from Laval, Quebec, came into the tournament ranked number 73 in the world. She's now number 24. Her gritty play and underdog status made her a fan favorite in New York, but so did her graciousness. After losing the final, which was played on the anniversary of September 11th, she told the crowd this. On this day, it was especially hard for New York and everyone around the, the United States. I just want to say that I hope I can be as strong and as resilient as New York has been the past 20 years. Already a star in the Paralympic pool, Aurelie Rivard brought home a whopping five medals from the Tokyo Games. It wasn't without bumps, however. Her first race, the 50 freestyle, where she was the defending champ, she managed only bronze. She said afterwards she needed to leave it in the past and not let it affect her next races. She sure didn't. Rivard went on to win four more medals, including gold in the 100 and 400 freestyle, setting world records in both events. With 10 career Paralympic medals, she'll look to add to her trophy case in Paris 2024. Due to the pandemic, international women's hockey had essentially been iced since the 2019 World Championships. And Canada, which missed the final in 2019 for the first time in the history of the tournament, had something to prove. The United States had won five straight world titles in eight of the last nine, not to mention topping Canada for gold at the 2018 Pyeongchang Olympics. The gold medal game in Calgary was a classic addition of the cross-border rivalry, with Canada coming back from a 2-0 deficit to tie the game and take it to OT. And just like the 2010 and 2014 Olympic finals, it was who else? Marie-Philippe Poulin scoring the game-winning goal with authority, bar down. For more great performances, including Canada's most decorated Olympian, Penny Oleksiak, check out my story on cbcsports.ca.